Okay, some of you guys are not gonna like this. Uh, not this, this is amazing, but some of you guys are not gonna like this. Okay, this actually, that has to wait because I don't think I've got enough time to do both these things justice in one video. And yeah, yeah, I know I've used the same title before on the stonewashed denim jeans video, but it's a good title and I'm gonna milk it for all it's worth. Where did I leave my glasses? Right, so is this just, Another hot take video. Uh, kind of, yeah, but it's more a video to challenge some of the more established norms in this little like raw salvage denim community we have. Basically, we just need to stop gatekeeping this shit. Now, there are definitely some hills to die on. Having your denim have a little bit of stretch in it is certainly not one of them. Having your jeans come from China or from Turkey or from anywhere that's not either the US or Japan, that's not one of them either. And having your jeans washed or stone washed, also in one. And actually, a whole lot of you guys agreed with me on that one. You know, I really was expecting a whole avalanche of hate off that last video. I mean, if I'd posted that up on the forums or if I'd written an article about that a few years ago, I'd have got like, yeah, 316 have sold out. Like, wash denims for pussies. Uh, you're not a man unless you're bleeding behind the knees. But we're a community here, and that community is made up of people from all different walks of life, all, all age ranges. And I mean, as Johan and Andrew said, our needs have developed over the years. Like, what we want from, from a garment it develops and changes as our, our needs changes. And I think that's reflected in how the community's changed overall. Uh, basically, we've just become a lot more chilled out and that is really nothing but a good thing. I mean, we're just not as, as militant or obtuse as, as I feel that the denim community or the raw denim community used to be. I mean, like the comments on that video were, I think 99.9% .9 positive. There's just some guys being dicks there, but there was just 99. Some guys being dicks and then some porn sites. Anyway, 99% positive, which, yeah, I got everything from, okay, like this video convinced me to go ahead and buy these jeans and maybe my next pair is gonna be a pair of Ross, which is fantastic, or from the other side of that, it was like, yeah, okay, like fair enough, but they're not for me. All legitimate, fair points. All very well reasoned and easy points. I mean, like nobody, Okay, one guy was calling me names, but I'll let that slide. So I am pretty curious how you guys are gonna to react to this one. I mean, yeah, stone washing selvage denim, Japanese selvage denim, that's one thing. Having some, some stretch in selvage denim, that could be something else. But first, before we get into that, let's talk about some things that might be misconceptions. Some of the misconceptions that I used to have about putting stretch in, in any kind of denim, selvage or otherwise. Stretch makes them jeggings. That's gonna depend mostly on how tight you choose to wear them. You could wear a pair of non-stretch selvage denims so super tight they're gonna be considered jeggings. You probably shouldn't. You're not gonna be able to father children afterwards or walk properly. It's not authentic. Okay, this idea of authenticity in denim, I kind of get it but I don't really. I mean, in reality, what is authenticity in terms of denim, in terms of a pair of jeans? Japanese denim. It's the denim that we all have high up on a pedestal. But I mean, denim is so not Japanese. Jeans are so, so not Japanese. They do it well, certainly. They do it very, very well. But does that really make it authentic? I mean, if so, then there are brands out there, well, Naked and Famous, who are doing it extremely well also. They're doing it extremely well with a little bit of stretch in some of their fabrics. 
So does that make it authentic? I guess so, right? Has that been squint the entire time? I guess that's straight now. Nah. Or let's look at it in another way. Jeans are the epitome of a design where form follows function. Jeans were the, the answer to the need of durable workwear way back when. The, the denim fabric that was just the, the best material to realize this in. The rivets, the riveting on the stress points that gave them an advantage over other, other designs. And the, the five pocket design of jeans, that was something that evolved over several decades to be what it is today. So practicality is authentic and having a little bit of stretch in your denim given the fits that are popular today, given our lifestyles today, then that just makes it very, very practical. There's just no two ways about it. Being able to move, that's practical. So, stretch and salvage denim is authentic. Hashtag facts. Okay, the last point that I want to cover is the one that I think is gonna count most against stretch and salvage denim. And that is this uh, misconception that it just doesn't fade. I thought this as well for the longest time and I was just so, so wrong. I did a video a while back on a pair of nudie brute nuts and I'm still not sure if I'm saying that right. But anyway, I did a video on a pair of nudies. These pair of nudies had, I think, 3% stretch in them. I, they'd seen somewhere, not very much. And then I, I just, I wasn't too much into the fit. They were in the closet for the longest time just collecting dust and I kind of grabbed them when I had some laboring work to do. I was just working, working at a friend's place renovating. And so I just used them as a pair of beater jeans. After a couple of pretty hard days on this building site, I threw them in the wash, pretty hot. And I was so super surprised at how nice they came out. I mean, previously my thinking was somewhere along the lines of Okay, if it's got stretch in it, then it's got some sort of elastic in the yarns. And so how can that fade like 100% cotton yarn? Well, yes, there is some kind of stretch material used in the yarns, but only in the weft yarns. And the weft yarns, they're not dyed with anything. The warp yarns, they are all cotton. Indigo rope dyed cotton, just like every other pair of jeans that we know and love. And that indigo rope dyed yarn, of course, it's just gonna fade exactly like every other pair of jeans. I mean, just look at the fades here. There's honeycombs, there's whiskering, there's phone fades, there's wallet fades, there's fading on the knees, there's fading on the thighs. All of the things that you just expect from a run-of-the-mill salvage denim pair of jeans, raw salvage denim pair of jeans. And all of these things, I thought that stretch would kind of take away from those. My thinking was this, and this is in particular relation to, I guess, the, the whiskering and the honeycombs. I mean, the whiskering and the honeycombs, they come from just the way that a pair of jeans fits in the body and through the movement of that body. The, the higher areas in, in those sort of stretch points, they get exposed to more wear, therefore have less indigo. I thought that stretch would do what it says on the box and stretch to accommodate this so you wouldn't have these high and low points. But I was just a bit of an idiot and it was proof that I definitely shouldn't believe everything that I read, especially on the forums. This would only make sense if you're wearing your jeans so super, super tight that they would be considered a pair of jeggings. And then I think even then, if you're wearing them that tight, you're still gonna get some bunching at some places. I mean. If you look at somebody wearing a pair of lycra shorts, then you can still see the fabric bunches up. Honeycombs, whiskering, they are just unavoidable. So, if they're not jeggings, and they really shouldn't be jeggings, and if they are practical and therefore authentic, and if they fade like any other pair of raw denim jeans, then why wouldn't we wear them? But, back to this particular pair of jeans. You see, this whole thing got started from Bezad. He's one of the guys from Naked and Famous. He dropped me a comment on a video of mine and he, he was the guy that suggested that I bleach my selvage denims and I did that, it worked out super well. So link to that up in the corner somewhere. And then we were chatting and he was like, hey, we should do something together. I'm like, okay, awesome. What, what have you got in mind? Fully expecting it to be some sort of Rick and Morty, scratch and sniff, pickle juice, make you fly, glow in the dark denim. And it was like, stretch salvage. Uh, a little bit dull considering, and also I 
didn't really fancy crucifying myself in front of my denim brethren. But I'd not caught up with Bezad for, I, I don't know, five years or something, or whenever the last time the Naked and Famous were showing in Berlin. So yeah, I, I was really curious what he had to say. And so we jumped on a call. And I came out of that call, maybe not a convert, not, not just yet, but curious enough to be open-minded. So he was kind enough to send these on over. Well, it looks like raw denim. It, it smells like raw denim. It is raw denim. And it looks like salvage denim. It is salvage denim. You know, at first glance, if I hadn't been told, and if I'd missed this massive pocket flasher right here, I would be none the wiser looking at them or, or feeling them that these jeans had that little bit of stretch in them. Right, the details real quick. It is a 12.5 indigo warp white weft denim. It's got 2% elastine in the weft, that's the stretch part obviously. The denim itself is woven in Japan and then they are sewn together in Canada. This is the Weird Guy Fit which is a medium rise and a, a kind of a slim taper. It's got the five pockets, it's got belt loops, it's got a button fly. The buttons are nice, solid, branded, naked and famous. These just look like a good, solid pair of jeans. So let's put them on and do some things in them. Okay, so first impressions. Focus, first impressions. The fit is definitely on the, the slimmer side. The taper is really, really nice down towards the foot. And the fact that I'm actually crouching down right now talking to you is a testament to the, the practicality, authenticity of stretch. I've been meaning to drill holes in something for a while. That sounds like something that's gonna require a lot of movement, right? So let's drill some holes. Actually, that's the wrong bit. Okay, Pops, before you give me a hard time for not taking care of my drill bits, like you taught me, this is an old beater set that I found out in the street and they just get used and abused for whatever. The, the nice fancy set is, is nice, it's just taken care of, it's in there, it's fine. The afternoon sun on my balcony is absolutely gorgeous, but it's an absolute bastard for filming. But anyway, all I really have to do here is I have to drill some holes in a plastic box so I can zip tie it to the pizza carrier at the front of my bike so people don't steal it again. You know what, I'm just going to finish this tomorrow because it doesn't work at all with this harsh light. Okay, deja vu, I know, but I can actually see to do this now. And nobody saw it when I was out and about last night, which is awesome. Because you see, in Berlin, there's not really bike thieves the same way that you find in London or New York. There's more opportunistic thieves. They will steal a bike if they see one that's easy to steal, but they're not going to put any effort into it, which is quite a Berlin thing. But if they see anything that's not tied down, they're going to take it. So if you leave your bike lights on, gone. If you leave a, a basket on that's not zip tied down, it's going to be gone. So anything that's going to make it like a little bit difficult for the opportunistic thief, then that's going to be a good thing. So I'm thinking one in the middle here and here, and then maybe two on the bars front and back. That should be enough discouragement. 26. And while I'm at it, I think I want some drainage holes down the front. Maybe a couple more. 
Ow! Well, that was just fucking thick. I guess I better just go find a plaster for this. Found a plaster, also found some industrial alcohol for taking the pen off, and I found some zip ties. Well, the childproofing really works. Right, I had a bit of a genius idea, at least genius for me, not genius for anybody who actually knows what they're doing. But to get the burrs off the, the holes that I've just drilled, I was trying to do it with a knife and, well, that happened. Uh, but I'm just going to use a countersink to take the burrs off it. There we go, not thief proof, but lazy thief proof. Should I zip tie this as well? Okay, not a bad job if I do say so myself. And the jeans? Well, the thing is, I didn't think about the jeans at all. Like, they didn't bother me in the slightest. Which really gives some credence to the fact that a little bit of stretch in, in your selvage denims is... is as I said, nothing but a good thing. And well, since I worked on the bike, I may as well just take the bike out for a spin. Okay, I wasn't just dumping my garbage out on the street. See, in Berlin, there's this stuff called uh, zum Verschenken. That is when you do dump your stuff out in the street and somebody comes along and goes, oh, that's, that's nice, I'll, I'll have that. And it's a good way to just uh, pass things along that you just don't need anymore. And I just remembered that I forgot something. So I'm on the way to the post office to pick up a package right now. For some reason, the post office has decided that it's much easier and much faster and much more cost effective to just deliver you a letter telling you've got a package and not bother delivering the package. But anyway, I have no idea what it could be. It might be, it might be, might be, might be a pair of jeans. You see, do you guys remember when I mentioned in one of the videos that I'd never tried a pair of iron hearts? Well, God bless one of you out there that you reached out and said, like, I've got a spare pair. Would, would you like them? I, I'll donate them to the video. Uh, or donate them for a video. And so they sent them over. Let's see if that's what this is. One long angry line later. Right, I couldn't take you inside because, well, People get funny about filming in public places here. And uh, fair enough, like everybody's got the right to their privacy. And it was also a complete bust. Uh, as well as not delivering the package to your door, they also don't deliver it to the post office very well either. So I guess I have to go back in a couple of days and see if it's there. So far this whole stepping outside my flat thing to do vlogging is uh, not working out all that great. But it did give me a chance to test out the jeans, which is uh, it is pretty good actually because today we're about 10 degrees hotter than I think any reasonable person should wear salvage denim in. I think it's about 34, 35 degrees in Berlin today. I think it's like the, the last gasp of summer. I've also got no idea if you guys can actually hear me because I don't know how this mic is holding up with the wind noise. But the jeans, okay, I'm gonna die. Yeah, for this weather, I'm like a complete convert. I don't think if, for this weather and for cycling, I'm a complete convert. I don't think you really should wear jeans in this kind of weather. I think it's just uncomfortable and foolhardy. But if you're going to, if you insist on doing it, and you're going to do anything a little bit athletic, this cycling around the city is not athletic, but if you're going to do something a little bit athletic in your denims, then yeah, a little bit of stretch is nothing but a good thing.
Come sit on. There you go, man. Have a good one, yeah? Right, now I know why the Casey Neistat's and all these other vloggers of the world, and now I know why they are so damn fit. You've got to do absolutely everything twice. Like I've been up and down those stairs, you've got to take your bike down, then you've got to put the camera, then you've got to get your bike back up, then you've got to take it back downstairs again. It's, it's exhausting, I'm knackered. I mean, like, this looks like I just got in, right? I just put the bike and then I, I came through here. No, I've been home for like 15, 20 minutes. I've, I've put the dishwasher on. Like, and then came and set this up. Right, anyway, all of these guys, like all the Casey Neistat's of the world, if they're gonna be into raw denim, they should definitely be into raw denim, raw salvage denim, with a little bit of stretch, because that's just gonna make their lives a lot easier. And the fades would be absolutely sick with that kind of lifestyle. But anyway, right, what was I talking about? Okay, I've, I've got to bring this to an end at some point, because this has been going on for days. Days, like really days. If you're on the fence about getting your first pair of, of raw denim jeans and that you're a little bit worried about the discomfort, then just go for one with like a little bit of stretch in it. And also I can really recommend the Naked and Famous. Seem to be very well made jeans. And so, yeah, guys, that just, that just leaves me, oh yeah, like, subscribe, do that, all, all that other good stuff. And that just leaves me to say, guys, I hope you're taking care of yourselves, hope you're taking care of each other, and I'm gonna see you in the next vlog.